What's up, everybody? Just want to make sure and we're sharing all this, get this out to the masses. Yeah. Um, so, last night, yesterday, we watched some footage from the 2018 Northern Rock Racing Series uh, race at Wildcat. We should have been at Wildcat this weekend. In fact, right now, I'd probably still be uh, uh, in the Midwest somewhere, probably uh, still driving. Um, but uh, instead, we're all locked in the house. So I figured we could uh, hang out and watch some rock racing together. Curtis Hazard, thank you for joining, sir. Got a couple of people here um, coming in. Uh, I am also excited to have another special guest with me. Uh, we had Jonathan Wright from Black Dog Media yesterday, Black Dog Photography. Got to hang out with me for a little bit. Billy and Teresa, thank you for joining um uh, before that on friday we had sam dubay from canada curtis what's up man um and uh so we you know this is this is turning into something guys i'm i'm pretty excited uh pretty excited about all this so um but i am extremely uh, excited to announce our um guest for today to to watch Wildcat with us is none other than uh, Dylan Patton from D-Pats Photography and Jeffers Race Cars. Uh, if you're if you haven't been following Dylan, uh, please get over and and check him out. But uh, Dylan, say what's up, man. You know, just hanging out, I guess. You know, watch yeah. my buddy. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, and, and what we John and I were talking about it yesterday is. Uh, you know, this is this is what we do. You know, Anthony Garcia, Brian Bebo, thank you guys for watching. Nathaniel Schaefer checking in. Dean Clackett, we've got uh, literally tens of people watching us now. Woo! Tens of people. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to uh, I'm just going to start this footage because the video is an hour Welcome and fifty five minutes everybody. long, but uh, we're this not going to. We're not going to watch it all. Uh, I will be kind of fast forwarding through it, you know, so, Northern Rock um, round one sponsored by Nike Dylan, We've what's, there. what's, uh, Today, what's been going on, man? How is this shut down, you know, the country almost? How is this affecting you guys? Are you still bail building race cars? Are you still, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, actually, uh, we're still working full time. Uh, kind of this kind of situation now, could really, really hurt a boss like mine. You know, sure. business that he, you know, we're obviously not a necessity. Or the amount of you guys do this as a hobby, you know, it's not something. You know, a lot of them are professional, but it's it's more of a hobby for a lot of these guys. And uh, you know, uh, I'd say you know, a couple hundred thousand dollar race cars isn't necessarily at time like this. So yes, yeah, I think working. Is, uh, yeah, you know, like if something like this, you know, we had to shut down, it probably hurt my boss pretty bad. Yep. No doubt about it. Absolutely. So what, um, what, what about D Pat's photography though? I mean, you're, you're not going to races now, so you're, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's good to have that, uh, and I mean, you work on race cars, dude. How, how tough is that? That's your fallback. I mean, come on. <laughs> or, or vice versa, you know, you work on race cars and your fallback is shooting some of the nastiest RC, uh, RC, but well, RCs too, but some of the nastiest off-road racing in the on the planet. Come on, man. Right. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, not seeing the races, you know, that sucks. Obviously, it sucks not going to the races, but it is kind of nice. It's like a vacation, as you will, because usually that's what we do every weekend or every other weekend. So yep. having this break, actually missing a race is kind of nice. So John and I were kind of talking about that uh, yesterday. Sean Rusin, thanks for joining, man. Uh, Sean Rusin from out in California. Um, U4RC fame. 
uh, John and I were saying like we usually have a month and a half, two month break in the middle of the summer, and he's like, we're pretty much getting that break now, and then as everything opens back up and uh, we get back to racing, you know, we'll have a uh, uh, we'll have a busy summer, and it's gonna be hot, and it's gonna be dry, and it's gonna be dusty and nasty. <laughs> so, yeah, Mr. Tabor, thanks for joining, sir. You got to sleep in. That's good, man. It's Sunday, I'm not supposed to be working. Uh, let's see. Hey guys, if, uh, for those that are in here watching, thank you. Um, uh, if you don't mind getting out and sharing this and give us some likes and thumbs up, man, I'd really appreciate it. Um, we definitely want to see this grow and, and, uh, keep it going. So, uh, we kind of talked about, uh, some of the projects that Jonathan's working on as far as Black Dog goes, you know, um, what's D-Pat's got? in the making you know what i mean uh, i mean i have uh i submitted a couple articles from a different magazine uh, we're about to get the time clock out there. just to kind of put the sport in a different spotlight that it's not normally getting i guess uh obviously fridays that's something i plan on going full on through started the last year kind of fell out of it just because it got really a lot of those i was typing up on the way to a race so i just out of control, I didn't have time to do it, so this year I'm committing to it, and I'm going to do one every single Friday until I have done every driver that exists in the sport and has existed, so. Nice. That's a badass, man. You know, that's a concept that you could sell to a magazine or something, you know, like, absolutely. Well, for the fans, you know, that don't get to come and experience this and don't know all the stuff that me and you know. That's kind of like why we're doing this right now. This exact, exactly, yeah, exactly, like, um, because, you know, we joke around about it in the hotel room and, and on at the races and stuff. But, like, it's ba our our little group is, is basically a, a, I don't know, like, as far as rock bouncing goes, it's a, we, we could have our own little reality show. I mean, it's silly to, you know, it's a silly concept. But, it, but, but I think that that's what's entertaining about it is it's, you know, people don't get to see the behind the scenes, man. And it's. It's pretty fun. <laughs> it's the best. I think it's the best part. I know, yeah, exactly. The the racing is is cool, man, but uh, all the shenanigans and everything that goes on behind the scenes is definitely it's definitely a blast. Cool, man. Alessandro Milani, where are you uh, joining us from? Where's everybody coming to us from? Kyle Wolf, thank you. Kyle I was talking to Kyle earlier. He's got a nasty project in the making. Scott Nelson Furrer, Matthew Nix, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, watching a little uh, Wildcat action from 2018. Um, anybody having any issues, usually Anthony Garcia is kind of my producer, keeps me straight. Anybody having any feedback or everybody can hear everybody all right? Mr. Berman, thank you for joining. Cassie Stewart, I will be back. I gotta see that buggy in in person, man. I really, I, I love that buggy. Need some tranny work right now. Mr. Berman's buggy. Needs a little TLC in the shop. I really want to get to some other races, man. I love. Get back out to one of these. I love going to the NRRA events, and I can only imagine that going to an outlaw event is going to be its own thing. It's going to be different, and then going to a pro rock race is going to be different, like. You know what I mean? I uh, I am a fan of rock bouncing, uh, period. So I, I I definitely want to get out and see some different events. The Mountain Mud Run, Dylan. I'm really hoping that we can drag you to that this year. Um, Curtis, thank you, sir. Roland Kirkus. Roland Kirkus. Yep, Kirkus Circus running them cut boggers. Everybody is running cut boggers at this race, man. I love it. Yep. This hill's nasty, guys. Um, last year, I didn't get a chance to go over because, as John and I talked about yesterday, we raced uh, after the second hill uh, for the big bouncers at the RC race last year. So I was building hills while they were racing hill two. So Curtis Hazard, yes, Woodstock, New Hampshire, joining us from the uh, 
mecca of oh, rock yeah, bouncing on the east coast. Yeah, dude, that park is no joke. It is no joke, huh? And uh, and then, you know, you go right up the road to the Mountain Mud Run off-road park, and it's just it's no different. The hills are nasty. You know, the terrain is badass. Like it's beautiful. The White Mountains. I mean, it doesn't get any more. You know, it doesn't get any more natural than that. It's, uh, uh, Curtis, what's the what's the uh, that mountain that everybody climbs? Uh, it's like the tallest point in Maine or the East Coast or something like that. Curtis can tell us, but it's not that far. It's pretty cool. You can see like California. All right, I'm gonna fast. I'm gonna fast forward through you know the uh, the rollovers and the downtime guys because I know that y'all don't have four hours to hang out today. I don't want to keep everybody here too long. A lot of people have been asking. Uh, Sounds like Forrest to me. What, it, what yeah, Forrest Kirkus. Oh, really? The Avenger buggy. Yeah. yeah. I understand that. But I mean, that's just me. Yeah. You have a blown transmission. Tranny. Yeah. Um. My dad, Chad Molitor. Don't get me wrong. I love listening to Dave and Bree, but. That's right. <laughs> the the thing it. Oh, of course. The thing is, is back in 2018, you know. I, I wasn't able to get to the races yet. I wasn't going to the races yet. I think this was your first year, wasn't it? Were you at Were you at this race, Dylan? I came in at the end of the year. Okay. A couple so, races. Yeah. Twenty eight, but not a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think I did. I went to every outlaw race in twenty eighteen. Okay. But um. So. I mean, I went to Southern. I went to the Southern Rock. I went to the race at Bikini Bottoms just because it was really close to me. Uh, but the races, you know, like Wildcat stuff, they were still, you know, I was still in that decision making of driving yeah. seven. Sure. Yeah. And I still. Uh, but it, it, it has its. Per Curtis uh, Mount Washington. Curtis Hazard says Mount Washington. Uh, it's the. Uh, what up, Heath Lawler? It's beautiful. Who put that beautiful up there. Up there. I, I see Clayton was right. One of the targets I followed from Wolf Ford and Philip Casper. Yeah. And said he, uh, really he was up there really taking pictures of upstate New York, and it's it's beautiful up there in that area. I can only imagine what it looks like with Curtis. Is. Yeah, it's even more underdeveloped, undeveloped, you know, and stuff. Uh, Anthony Garcia is fully committed. Uh, he's heading up there this year, so that's cool. Yeah, what's the deal with that, Curtis? Is that still going on? You guys made any decision about that? Yeah, Curtis. Uh, as far as I know, Curtis says he's. He's having it at his park. I they they uh, just canceled the Mountain Mud Run in May. So that but that that wasn't a rock bouncer event. That was Mudapalooza. That was not. That's that's the mud trucks. So that doesn't really affect us yet. So May, June, unfortunately, is is when we're supposed to be going. So yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. TBR for the win. You guys who are just tuning in haven't missed much. This Bubba running them cut boggers all the way around. round one. Wildcat's a great, great park to uh, <laughs> for viewing. I mean, you look out and you see all those UTVs and stuff. Like, they can see the hills so perfectly. It's awesome. I love it when parks take time to clear out a spot for spectators and make it nice. Cole Shirley. He's been a and for the outlaw race, it was awesome. It's probably the most scenic race I've ever shown. Nice. Had a great spectator area, of course, it's up nice. Had an awesome backdrop. I mean, it was it was cool race. Nice, Indeed. that's awesome. Cole, Mr. Cole Shirley, Mad Ram Eleven. If you don't know who Mad Ram Eleven is, something's wrong. <laughs> you're, you're living. Under a rock that's under a volcano. <laughs> Chris Smith, thanks for joining, sir. William Uranga, hopefully I'm saying that right. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Pete Choquette Sr. We're uh, hovering right around 10 people uh, at a time. 
Uh, Dylan says, you know, we're looking at a, a big driver number for June, and I, I agree, especially if things keep getting uh, um, canceled, you know, and Curtis is willing to, to have us uh, out to the park, man, but I tell you what, you, you better be ready. You're going to need some room because there's going to be a lot of people going to show up, man. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah no you ain't kidding you ain't kidding but I, i'm pretty sure that we could uh there's definitely housing and stuff there's hotels and stuff that are close so yeah hey and i'll be honest with you man I, I love the mountain mud run and i love seeing the bouncers run and i think that's great for the drivers but i i'd be just as content just going to curtis's house and playing for a couple of days man that's no joke Best hanging out oh, see this is why uh this is why i asked charles for footage so i don't have to do the ads you know what i'm saying because right now i'm just playing this on youtube so michael sharon thanks for joining us mm. <laughs> oh that is the amazing see a common theme of choosing the right sideline but uh, so, I I don't want to. Um, I really don't want to get my hopes up, man. But but uh, you know how how far, Dylan? How far do you think we can get in the season with not with postponing? You know what I mean? These races. How are we gonna get back into it? You know what I mean? Are we gonna have to have a damn race every week, every weekend? <laughs> you know. Honestly, if they want their numbers to be good as far as attendance for not only the drivers and the spectators, uh, I think they probably are going to have to cut some races out. It's really the only way. There's no way we can do 10 races with half the season. It's already bad enough for these drivers. I mean, with there's multiple series being now, it's only fair to the drivers to yep. break it that way. Uh, it's it's it kind of is a shame, but with the situation we're in, I think it'll be acceptable to everyone, uh, sponsors included. I think they will be willing to work. I mean, think about the hit that they're taking right now too. You know, I think races, you know, still for any, you know, for Southern Rock, there's ten races, there's five races for the Outlaw Series. There is, you know, five races for Pro Rock Racing. Renegade Series, it's going to have at least I think three bouts of races. I mean, that's that's. We're, they're going to have to be some big open lines of communication between everybody, in my opinion. That yeah. It's, you know, because racing every weekend is just not a possibility. I mean, if they if and if they want to turn out at their events. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to affect the RC series less. Uh, so I, I think races like Texas RC Rock Racing and uh, Curtis's series, um, King of the Mountain, like it's – as long as we can get out and continue to hold races, I, you know, I think we'll have stuff to do. But, but it, you know, Curtis is is less affected because it's on his property. <laughs> so, you know. It's going to come down to just everyone's going to really have to work together. Exactly. Yep. It, it is a shame what's going on right now, but uh, we were all going to get through it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. This, Great year still for 2020. Because honestly, I mean, looking into this year, it was going to be one of the biggest years yet. Yes. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> it was. So, this it was shouldn't huge. stop. This shouldn't stop it from happening. No. No. And everybody's going to want to be out of the house, man. Let's be honest. Everybody's want to get going to want to get out of the house, and and just stretch their legs, and that's going to be awesome. Hopefully, we get. People, you know, we need to really pay attention to the logistics of past races and, you know, figure out which races we, we may have to drop and which races we need to have. Yep. Go there. Yep. Probably the, what everyone's talking about right now. And, uh, you know, I Will hope it works out the best. You know, I, I certainly cannot commit to going to every great week, you know, Before every weekend. I, I, I know you definitely couldn't do that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Got to preserve the hill. Uh, I mean, you know, a lot. They're, they're working every day of the week. They they barely got time to go to the races. Just you know, spaced out as they are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Curtis Hazard. Everybody wants to come here. If you want to, if you build it, they will come. Yes, sir. Rob Wyman. Thanks for joining us. Rob Wyman, the Bobby Tanner of RC Rock Bouncing. 
uh, <laughs> Dylan Patton, be talking to you soon about a logo for Hazardous R4 Park. This is Will's last attempt. Holler. Before they Mr. Ben around. Hume, Texas RC Rock Racing. Thanks for joining, sir. Jake Wright. Jake Wright, the winner of the uh, shootout out there, King of the Hammers, the first and ever RC shootout. From Will. Ignacio Suarez. I should Stewart. be better at speaking Spanish. Uh, thank you for joining, sir. Yeah, he's a little Rob Wyman, good. keep the races going and the sanity. Yes. Yep. Antonio, thanks for joining now, us. While we wait for Will to get down the hill, uh, hit that share button and we will be back. Let's see, we got Will Bobby Stewart Tanner out in the trees. Not gonna wanna miss this. That's Bobby good save. Tanner is on deck. We will be back. Yeah, Will Stewart is no seconds. joke, man. Stay tuned. Bobby Tanner. Running them cop boggers. Rob Wyman, I love this nickname, yeah. Uh, yeah, this hill two is nasty, Dylan. Uh, I mean, Curtis, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I the first time I got to see that hill was last year, yep. Uh, first up rock race, and it, uh, that was at that park. Then there was there was pro rock race there, too. But uh, look at him walk yep. right up it though, damn, yeah. pretty much standing right where that big ledge is, yep, directly. Horizontal with it. It was, it was awesome. They were serious beat down. A lot of guys were taking the far left and just jumping it. I remember Aaron Miller on that hill, dude, just destroyed <laughs> cockroach, man. He was getting loud. It didn't, it didn't hurt nothing, but he was getting rowdy. With he it, was man. getting rowdy, yes. Man, I miss that guy. I wish he'd come around. I, I know, man. I know. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about. I don't want to talk about certain things, you know. Uh, you know, because I don't, I don't know how, if people want to be uh, putting stuff out there, you know what I mean? So. He's hiding and hunkered down somewhere and he's, he's going to come up with something really cool. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he's great for the cooking plan or what he's doing, but he's hiding for a reason. Oh, he yeah. Really likes it. yeah. I know he's going to. Yeah. Well, I remember when Kryptonite dropped the pictures of the cockroach buggy, man, I was like, oh my goodness. That thing is nasty. That's cool, button. Like it. Uh, yes, Rob Wyman. Yes, Bobby Tanner, getting it, af getting after it. So Timmy Sorensen, Timmy Chuck. Uh, we haven't heard a whole lot from him this year, except for the fact that uh, you know they're just busy. I, I know, I know the Texas race. They were. Uh, getting ready for bike week i think and timmy being in the motorcycle industry you know that's a big time of the year for them yep lots of bike stuff is timmy has been working yep. i know he's been real so, i don't like it but always talking to timmy yep uh and then wind rock uh, he was having issues isn't he having issues at the end of the year didn't he uh, need a motor or something for uh money money shot yeah, he pretty much scrambled it at Bikini Bottom at the finals. But uh, he, yeah, it wasn't as bad as he had thought it was, but I know he, he had it freshened up in the off season. Okay, uh, good. Had some work done to it for sure. Jeffro Bodine, thank you for joining us. That's some good stuff. Timmy was still learning how to drive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and let's be honest. I mean, Hellbilly Deluxe is is a good buggy, but uh, I think it's heavy. I don't think that motor was as fresh. Yeah. He needed money shot, man. Yeah. He, he's a I mean, he, he was, last year was major difference. The first couple races I seen Timmy, it was in, you know, Hellbilly Deluxe, and I was like, man, this buggy's got to be really heavy or something. Yeah. Now, money shot. He, he scoots through the courses, and yeah. he, you know, you know, he, honestly, I love that buggy. That's probably one. If I had to pick one, be one of my favorites, that that was almost going to be what my RC build was, yeah. just a money, money shot. shot. Yep. I love that buggy. Yeah. So I read, I had to, hey, speaking of that, do, can we see, can we see Rotten? You got it? <laughs> Let's see it, man. Heck yeah. 
Well, it had its batteries in it earlier this weekend. Yeah, here it is. It looks really cool, but uh, it still got it still got a little ways to go. Yeah, what I what all uh, in there. Yeah, you got that uh, monster to fit in there, all right? That monster, uh, Mamba monster. Yeah. And you can see it's it's pretty it's, snug. It's a big yeah. It's a big it's a big girl. Well, it should be uh it should be like uh, what ten scale gold rush pretty much. Yeah yeah yeah. For those that are asking, Bobby has... I'm excited to play with it because now the nice weather has kind of got me wanting. To yeah. Get it done. Yeah, that's cool, man. You guys seen it here first? Well, not really because he's been sharing pictures of it, but uh, you know what I'm saying. I couldn't hold myself on. Once I got the, once I got everything put together and it was a roller, I was like, all right, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, oh right. yeah. Together at the end of October after finals, when you had everything in the room, and I was like, okay, yeah, I gotta have one. Yeah, I like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I don't ever plan on really owning a big bouncer unless I just stumble into a stupid amount of money. I mean, uh, honestly, if I had money, I'd, I'd build a multi core car or buy one. Yeah. that's the ultimate. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Those are nice. I love rock bouncers, but you know I like going fast too. Yep. And I could, you know, I had a rock bouncer. I'd also want like a race car because I could go fast and stuff. And those four kind of just take care of all that at once. Yep. So, I think my live the western side of the United States as it is. I don't think I could live in California just because of how it is. But uh, yeah, I like to live in out west. I like big hills and mountains. I like the dryness. I mean, it's super humid in Missouri and it sucks. Yep. Yep. It's awesome, for sure. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'll ever own anything. I enjoyed taking the pictures. I mean, honestly, that one doing that than I think I ever could drive in. Yep. Hey, you can, you can still uh, definitely still get out and trail ride, though. You know, it'd be nice to have a retired U4 car to be able to go out and trail ride in. That'd be badass. People <laughs> looked at me and was like, do you want to drive this for, you know, you want to race this, you want to run this? I would not say no. Yeah, absolutely. Pass that up, but um, yeah. uh, doing it on my own, I mean, I know the sacrifices he's got no. to make. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I admire it, but I think I just have to do my part and continue doing what I'm doing, and, that's, and I'm happy with that. So. Nice. Ignace, Ignacio watching from San Felipe, Baja, Mexico. Dude, jealous. Yes. Kendall King, thank you. Corey Smith, Rob Wyman. We got, we got Bill Hills here. Big Hills. We got Big Hills here in New Hampshire, Rob Wyman says. Yes, you do. Mr. Bobby Tanner up there on the screen. I'm going to fast forward this, kind of get through a little bit, get to some action. And on the first hill, I wish I hadn't done it because when we got going up to there, it's hard to control the buggy with the boggers on the back. I wonder how many races there were that day. If I left my stickies all the way around, I think I could have did better on the first. How many races? We got going up to them. Race sir. Oh, how many drivers? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Shot as hard to the rack, and we got in the trees, and it's probably cost. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, like last year, I mean, I know there used to be a lot of drivers at races, but as far as competitive rock mousers, yeah, I think we have more than we have ever. Oh yeah, oh for sure. Here are race cards now. Yeah, yeah. Are you no kidding me, Menace, dude? The and, and even Gold Rush. I mean, Gold Gold Rush and Bad Influence, like you know, the reject cars. You know, by the race car factory, man. They're building race cars. Yeah, legit. Yeah. Yeah. I rode with this old boy. Sports at now. Yeah. You know, especially for guys watching it from the, you know, the start of it. And, you know, we finally made it to an event. You know, it took you, know, you a little longer than it did me, but you did, you know, also are way, way on the West Coast. So it's yeah. definitely a thing. Yeah. I couldn't. I, that ain't not. But what was someone like me to you that told me, well, why not? Yeah. You know, and that's all it took. I was at the when it was 2018. I was an outlaw race, or no, it's 17. I think. Yeah, whatever. I think it's 2018. And uh, I was leaving the race. It was at Flat Nasty. It was real close to my house, so I went to that one. And Kerry Day, he was uh, the Waka Heat Day. If you don't know who Heat Day is, you you also live under Rock. Heat. It's very well known throughout the community. But um, he asked me, "You coming to the next one?" I go, "Where's that?" She said, "It was at AOP." 
hard drive for me. And I was like, ooh, I don't think I could do that. And she goes, why not? It's too far of a drive. She said, well, we drove 14 and a half hours to get here. I said, okay. And went home and thought about it for like the whole 10 minutes and said, all right, I'll do it. Yeah. And that's where it all started. Well, Joe Pierce, dude. I mean, you know, you, you don't. You don't bitch about drives when you're talking to Joe Pierce. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, and if you enjoy it, it's worth it. Yep. You know, it, it, when you're doing something you enjoy, it doesn't matter. Yep. There is no limit. I think it's pretty happiness. awesome. I mean, the, the way they've got this set up, this hill and everything, the spectator is, is really can see good. I mean, it's got a Jimmy Chuck up on a hill. I think, uh, yeah. I mean, when we're in your area, I, I just kind of let this area, ride because Bobby's talking, you know, when the Godfather all speaks, we should all be listening, you know. <laughs> you know, Rip asks the question of how how can you afford yeah. to be in the sport? Well, you know, we speak to a lot wise of drivers man. out there, and the number one thing more than Very wise man. we have a lot of drivers out there that are in not the fancy like the day, but that puts yeah. the Yeah. Time yeah, I remember last year we I couldn't even see the end of the you know because it, it kind of goes up over a. It crests, you know, and goes back over the other side, and I couldn't even see the end of all the UTVs and cars and Jeeps and stuff that were parked in there. Mr. Billado, thanks for joining, sir. When we leave here, the buggy goes to them, and I don't see it again until the next race. I mean, they, they are... Yeah, we, had, we had it tied in there pretty good. I mean, yeah. even like... I'm, uh, so it was, I didn't get to do it at the Southern Rock race because I was just so busy that day, but... uh. And I, mean, I guess I was really busy during the Pro Rock, too, because they run so many different races. Oh, during I did manage to take the Pano shot. Like, I, it, when I was standing up on the hill, I, I took a series of photos, you know, across the crowd and ended up taking them in Photoshop and stitching it together to make one big, long Pano like your iPhone would do. Yep. It, it actually turned Nice. It was a ton. Of I love those shots, man. I love, uh, if you're not following Dylan on uh, Instagram, he, he does these, that kind of stuff where it takes two pictures. You know, I love, I love those shots, man. Yeah, I seen a guy that did that. It was probably like a year and a half ago. I seen it and I, I had to, I was like, how did you do that? Yeah. He told me how to do it. I figured that out. That's pretty neat. Nice. You know, things in Photoshop doesn't take much. Yeah. It is pretty neat. It actually has great engagement most of the time. I'm surprised. I don't know if people want to see the next thing. So, yeah. or what it is. Usually it's pretty good engagement. And I think people just like to see big and kind of close. Yeah. 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 I, it's almost like you're standing there live. Jason Eldridge, thanks for joining us. Dwayne Gibson, Tony Miller. Oh, he was working that rear steer for all he all he was worth. Oh, Chris. Yes, sir. What's happening, partner? Chris got a brand new truck. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's really nice. He's taking advantage of this apocalypse. <laughs> I'm gonna take advantage of the dang. <laughs> Uh, flights that are so cheap right now. Shoot. Yeah. yeah. If you want to take that chance, man, you're really threading the needle there. Yeah. Rob Wyman, I got panels for that man. Dylan Patton, hit me up when you're free later. Dude, I don't know this deal was going to get me work next. Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Hazard, if you're not following Deepak's photography, if you're not, follow Deepak's photography. Mr. Bobby Tanner. Oh, oh. My man Curtis, he does good play on words there. Huh? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, if you guys have any last minute questions for Bobby, let us know. Otherwise, All right, Sam Carter. Sam Carter just took off. Watching uh, Sam build this buggy from a trail rig to a freaking monster. He's rowdy now. Yeah, yeah, buddy. I mean, he's got it. He's got it dialed in too. Sam was a good driver before that motor. And I think as he learns that motor, he's just going to be, you know, just add him to the list. Watching this run right here, you can just tell how much difference it has now. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, but Sam is a driver, though. You can tell the way he uses rear steer, uh, the way he, dr he he drives out of rolls, you know. Um, he's He's definitely studied what works and... What's your opinion on that, Nick? What's that? Rear steer. What do you think about it? 
Uh, I think that in some cases, like uh, right-hand turns uh, at the end of uh, at the end of the hills. <laughs> um, no, I'm just uh, that was a little in, that's a little inside thing. I don't. I wasn't sure if you get that. Um, if, if I could, like, uh, if I see it having some advantages for sure. No, for Chris, sure. Now, the, more the sport, too, is we don't have just straight hill climbs anymore because buggies have obviously made it real easy to do so. Yeah. I think the reason a lot of these courses have turned into so much of a track kind of deal sure. is because you want the bounces on the course for a little bit longer for the fans. Uh, the drivers definitely get a better enjoyment out of them. But uh, when it comes down to overall racing and being on that podium, Guys that can can really you know, have a, a severe maneuverability of the machine, obviously, you're going to come out on top. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, especially if you drive. And let's be honest, you don't have to use it. Yeah, You don't exactly. have to use it. I think, I think the guys that try to use it too much are hurting themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're probably... I mean, I'm just an onlooker, so, I mean, I, I just say it how I see it, you know. Yep. You know, and I... I have no business, you know, yeah. telling someone no. to use it, could not. But from my perspective, when I see it, it's like, uh, you, you know, you probably hurt yourself there. And I'm sure that's what the guy, you know, on their crew right. is telling the same thing. It's like, you shouldn't have done that yep. there, you know. Yep. But what but, uh, it doesn't do is... And, then, and I think even the driver knows when it hurts them. But, uh, you know, there's still guys that are coming out on top without it. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Funny. So, Timmy won what two or three years with unfinished business. He needed to have rear steer, and even he admitted that uh, there should have been races where he should have lost uh, because he didn't have it. But that guy won a race eating a sandwich. I mean, <laughs> yep. I stole that from Jake Pike. He said that the last race it cracked me. <laughs> Oh man, we gotta get Jake Pike on here. What a good dude. Close to the end of I'm gonna, Pike's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna hit him up. It'd be good to have him on here. Dude. Jack, Please. thanks for joining. Keith Ritchie. And Jamie Coldiron. I've seen him on here a couple of times. Jamie Coldiron. Yeah. <laughs> yep, wearing his wearing his big big girl panties. Big boy. Big big boy, big girl. I got a good picture of him holding the panties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gonna sit with us, Sparky? That's another reason I started doing this because I got so much pictures. I have so many pictures that no one's even seen. Like, I got to get a way to get these out here, you know? Yeah. Well, we were t kind of talking about that the other day. Remember when I asked you about posting and do you do you just post randomly throughout the day or whatever? Uh, and that's the thing is if you do have enough content, man, you just nonstop, just constantly putting shit in people's face, you know, yeah. finding time to do it. I mean, I do like with the feature Fridays, I have been trying to get myself to, you know, I, I'm to send them a message, you know, send these drivers a message, uh, during the beginning of the week to get the information I don't already know, you know, especially like the food and drink and stuff like that. And then I will sit down and try and type that out and kind of go over, go over it. Cause it is a pretty decent amount. So I want it to be, you know, look good and sound good. Keep someone to read it for the, the whole minute it takes. And uh, so those have been getting scheduled just because I, I do have a very big day job, you know, and it's hard to do that. But my, almost 90, probably at least 90% of what I do is random. I'll, sit, I'll just pull my phone out, whether I'm on the toilet or I'm just uh, sitting in my car after I got off work. So I'll type it up real Post it out there. So I mean, it usually just off the steam of my pants, really. Yeah. But, well, uh, I mean, it's working, man. So don't stop. Cheryl That's for damn sure. Man, tough, Got uh, Timmy Cameron up on the starting line, running them cut barters in the back. This uh, I don't want to give it away, but if you haven't watched this yet, you know what happens. Back does for cash. Yeah. 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 I I hope they figured that axle issue out. I I, I don't know which torque do you remember which torque the, one. is the, the good one? one it was the bad one i think so yeah i don't know i know he had problems the entire time so danny furnace watching with us welcome danny danny furnace yep it was crap running a uh whole back chassis with rear steer Got to see him run out in California at uh, King of the Hammers. 
right Yeah, that's cool. I wish I could have made that happen, but I was, it was great yeah, it was last minute. I even got asked if I would, I could be pulling out there from a, by a race team, and I was like, you know what, I just, it, it's too tight. I have some other things going on that I have to take care of, and uh, wasn't able to make it. Man, it looked like y'all had to yeah, we did. Uh, we'll go. We'll go again this year. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do what I did this year, where I went out and stayed for you know three, four, three, four days. Um, I'll probably end up doing kind of what Clyde does and you know fly in the day before the race, or even the day of the race. You know, do the race and then fly out the next day type of thing. So. I'm, I'm submerging myself in it. I, Good. Uh, oh, I, I agree. If you can, I definitely, I definitely would. I'm going to do the whole week and a half or whatever, like the whole 10 days. Oh, dude. I mean, you could go out there a month before. <laughs> you know, shoot. I would enjoy that. Yeah. If, 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 good, if finances yeah. would allow me to. Yeah. And let's be honest, Dylan, it, that's going to happen. You know, I think, I, I think it's going to happen. Uh, we still have the West to conquer. <laughs> you know, we haven't even yeah. thought about that. And and I know for a fact that, uh, you know, we have a Southern Rock Racing Series. Uh, I know that there is a Western Rock Racing Series. So uh, it's just hasn't come into fruition yet. But um, I agree. I think... Uh... Just you know, Monster Jam didn't start across the world. It started in a, a small town somewhere. Yep. Turned in being a, you know, I mean, I, it, it's going to take a little bit to get to that level. That is, I, I think it, it could be the goal for some people. It could not be. I mean, some people probably aren't all the way for that. But I think it's more so just, just the financial uh, dedication they'd have to have. Yep. I think if. If finances could be taken care of and yeah, the, these guys were getting paid incredible. to do this, I don't think any of them would want to say no. I mean, yeah. Sure. Sure. As long as it doesn't get political, you know. Yeah. And I don't. Yeah. That's why there isn't a TV show. Or, you know, we've been approached uh, a dozen times, and I'm sure it's it's more of a we're doing it on our terms kind of deal. Probably. So. We yeah, I think I, it is headed that way. I know there's guys like Nick Hortler that are very, you know really working on getting this to a, a level like that. I mean, Clyde with the live feed, I think the live feed's awesome. Right. I think uh, it could see improvements Where's like anything else. I think Clyde uh, probably needs help. Yes. I need more need. I know all of this by himself. I don't know how uh, with aside from the people, but, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a big operation. I mean, you look at Ultra 4 and Hammer, Hammer King Productions, it's a huge, yeah. huge ordeal. You see the production they put out; it's awesome. Although I think we can, we can definitely do that oh, for this sport. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, people like us that are going to do it, you know, and don't expect nothing in return, you know, for a little, you know, a little while. Obviously, it's nice to get something, you know, but sure. Yeah, sure. You know, it's. I think it's more of just we got to get out there. We got to all work together to really push this to the next one. Yep, you ain't kidding, man, and. And uh, I am just as content being on the ground floor uh, as it builds, you know what I'm saying? And be part of that structure. Uh, and that's what this is right here. Uh, I want this to be like a communication point for all of us, you know. And I don't care if you're a spectator, a race series manager, a builder, a racer. I don't care what you are. You're welcome here. Uh, and this is, you know, this is that meeting point where we can all come hang out. You know, um, I keep saying we need your ideas. You know, what do y'all want to watch? And I'm starting to get some, man, and I love it because it's starting to come together. Tuesday, we're going to do the Chassis Builders uh, episode. Uh, soon after that, we're going to do the RC Race Series Managers episode where we have all the guys like Curtis Hazard, uh, Ben Hume and stuff. We'll have them on. Uh, and Say again? I said you're going to do yourself like you could do a split screen to like you ask yourself. <laughs> no, man, no. I, I mean, you know, you know how I feel about that. I, I just, I love bringing everybody together, man. This is what I, this is what I love to do. So Chris says he's already got the days off next year for hammers. I, I'm, I'm happy, dude. I, you're going to have a good time. If you love this rock bouncer stuff, man, it is, uh, it is on a whole nother level. Like when you get out there, it's so big. You know, and you go to Chocolate Thunder, or you go to Backdoor, like, there's always something going on. 
Um, I mean, you can just play all day long. It's amazing. Yeah, I look forward to that. Me and Chris are going to have to fly though. Yeah. I mean, we, we used to together for a long time, and I don't know if we could do a 24 hour flight. Yeah. Probably like 30 something hours. It's something retarded. Yeah, it's actually closer for me. I'm actually uh, about six hours away, six or seven hours away. Robert Tabor, yes, Robert Tabor, the mayor of uh, Bouncer or Bouncer Town. Mayor of Bouncer Town. Robert Tabor, you're like one stop hobby shop. If you yes, want sir. That. Yeah, uh, inadvertently too, the guy's just a natural like hunter gatherer. You know what I'm saying? Reminds me of my grandpa. <laughs> Yeah. That was more so just my grandpa collected everything. Yeah. We have everything. Yeah. I lost the wheel on my creeper seat at work the other day and went down to see my dad and I said, We got any of these casters? He's like, I don't know, look in the doors. Pull open two or three doors, got the exact one I need. I'm like, All right. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. Yes, yeah, bouncer town. Yeah, we knew what you meant, Robert. Robert. Uh... Bouncer town. Glad ringer. Yep, running them farmers. Like them dig tires. Another timeless buggy, man. That thing has been around. Uh, quite a long time. I don't know what uh, what he's putting out either, but we're we're, we're going to see more from this is your first time watching some rock from Mr. Mr. Ringer, the uh, the about. professor. So yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, I know he works hard to get some programs together for a lot of these racers. He does. Follow. Yeah. That is uh, you know, again, another thing. I'd love to have him or or uh, Nick on here to talk about Apollo Group, like, and help them grow that. I don't. I don't really. I don't know much about it. So. Um, I know they are, have a program together for the racers that get a little bit of help from some of the companies that are contributors to it. I know. That, yep. I think, I think that basically just. Sam Carter made us all. And he is doing with my partner in crime, Bree Molitor. The delayed trip right. watching this is tough because I have to like yeah. think ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sponsored by yeah. Nitro Gear and Axe. I'm trying to see where you're at so I can uh, Jason so I can sitting in with us. Sparky, we appreciate so it. So I know where you're at. You got Venom on the line here. Uh, I asked John yesterday, what do you think of Venom now? Venom re, re, reborn. I think it's sexy now. Yeah. Yeah. A little, uh, little wider stance, uh, trailing arms, sitting lower. Yeah. Low is the way to go. Yeah, for sure. Low and stable. My bug has like a three-inch belly pan, maybe. Okay. I think it may be even lower. Yeah, I just went with the, the larger shocks uh, all the way around. I went with five-inch power strokes all the way around. So. I'm going to... The rear to that, I believe, yeah. because right 110, and I don't think they're big enough. Yeah. Just like if I did my cape, my chassis smacks the top of my axle. And stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's yeah. What it needs to be. Also, though, I've never even owned an RC car, and I decided I was going to build this thing, which was a <laughs> very. It, <laughs> dude, I mean, I started with a wraith. That's that's at least out of the box. You know what I'm saying? That that you know it all came together. You know. You have an idea of what parts you actually yeah. need to build. With? Yeah. Just like, I'm just pissing in the dark over here. Like, all right, what's <laughs> this? After I've blown you up a bunch, I've asked the whole back a ton of questions. Yep. Pretty much everybody, I'm like, what do I need now? <laughs> oh, dude, and that's that's what I love about this uh, this community, man. Is we all we all try to come together and. Well, we, we all travel together, Bree. Got a lot of help from you guys, and uh, you know they're competitors. I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna. I don't think I'll be at that top competitive level yet. Yeah, it's awesome. I hope to love to get podium on these one of these days. But uh, you know, I know how to drive. First, and uh, getting help from everybody is really nice. These things are, are aren't just toys. They're race cars, dude. They really are. Very <laughs> toys. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's no difference in a drone. A drone's not a toy. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. That's a good I think thing. They, uh, very sophisticated piece of equipment. Yep. I totally agree. What do you think of that guy that was doing it the last couple of races on, from Jack. Texas? Uh, with the drone stuff? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I love that perspective. Um, Mountain Mafia does that. Mountain Mafia yeah. does that, right? So 
if we could have that, I think it would add another layer to the entertainment value. You know, the Absolutely. production, just like you said with Hammer King, same deal. You know, it it, it, yes! it needs to happen. Jack Porter getting nasty on, on this ledge, man. I know the Outlaw series is going to work on a situation like that cool. where we can kind of together and uh, do our thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, dude, the drone guys, I was telling them, you know, it's really just another perspective we haven't seen yet. And I was talking to the one guy, was, you know, at Pro Rock Races, and I said, you know what would be cool that I have never seen in this story is that you need to fly just in front, you know, because flying behind them, you take a lot of whiplash, sure. I'd say, but if you right in front of it with a camera on the back or pointing back or however you want to fly backwards, however you do it, but you tour, you're just a couple feet in front of that buggy and it's chasing it. That'd be pretty cool. Dang, dude, that'd that. be nuts. I know, but you heard it here first. Yeah, so someone does it. <laughs> that would be nasty. Yeah. I think it'd be cool. I don't know how to fly those things, or I'd do it. You know? Well, right. So that that's the thing. But let's be honest, man. If we start putting that out there, there has got to be some drone enthusiasts who oh, yeah. would take that opportunity to be a part of it. You know? Yeah. They may not know anything about rock racing. They may not be into off roading at all. They just love flying a drone. Yep. Right. Absolutely. That's, uh, he was, and the guy, Ryan Boyd, our races, Boyd, that's how they were. They, ready for his shot at this hill. they do an awesome job. And, and uh, I think, you know, just imagine, like, playing, like, a midnight club where you can change, like, the viewpoint from all around your car. Yes. You can get those, those you know, yes. that'd be cool. Going just kind of off to the set, to the, to the rear of it, or flying right in front of it at an angle. You can do all kinds of stuff. It's more of the... Are the trees going to be forgiving? You know, you got to be a really good pilot. You got to be. Yes. You know, the, the, I agree. You see, the guys that do the dirt bikes and the short course stuff, and that's second to none. I mean, it's super cool because you have that open environment. That's ideal. For yeah. We. It's going to be the best of the best. Yeah. No, there's no doubt. It's people that are sacrificing. I mean, it's just like you know, I'm not saying. We're going to be special, but climbing up on a hill to take pictures, you got to be prepared to do more than an average photographer. Yo, yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. Player getting tackled into them. You, we don't really have that option. You know, that's death. Yeah. You know, you got to move, you got to be agile, you got to have a good spot. You also know, got to get good footage, or good coverage. Yeah. And that ain't easy, man. Nope. But it's fun. Oh, dude. <laughs> My I started to listen to the Racing on the Rocks podcast with Matt Myrick, and he mentioned uh, uh, about uh, just the, the, the rush of it. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, hands down. That is, Man, that is one of the main things I'm attracted to about it. It's super cool. Yep. Uh, it's, it's pretty close to what it feels like racing, I mean, to me, but I get to do it for every single driver. Yes, so, yeah, no, yeah. And, hill after hill, hill, driver after driver after driver. It just keeps going. Yeah, <laughs> yep, absolutely. Dang, this dude's getting nasty. After you get to know everybody, you know their, you know which ones you can get a little bit closer to, or which ones you really need to pay attention to, and you know you, you get more comfortable for saying you get better footage and get better quality. Yep. I was like, but at first, my first race, I was I was 15 feet away from the race hill, you know, in the trees, and then after that, I was like, okay, this isn't worth the hoot. None of these pictures are worth the hoot. Yeah. Like, I gotta be where that guy is, you know. And, Curtis, have a good day, sir. Thanks for joining us. That would pretty See you, much Curtis. Be impossible, Tiffany. Been going for just about an hour now. We still got uh, another 50 minutes or so left. This is Ryan Boyd on uh, Hill 2 here, just beating on that thing. Ryan has had two buggies since this one. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we've got the RCB recovery crew. Underrated. <clears throat> underrated, and now uh, quiet one. To check out some more I like it. Don't quiet one, is nasty boy. That's a straight up race car. It is a perfect Ryan Boyd race car. It is, yep. I like it. It's playing Jane. The sound of it is even like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. He fired that thing up at Windrock. It was like. It sounds cool. I like it. Yeah. I think it's good. Book. So, a lot. Of, what I'm seeing is a lot of this is uh, recovery time. So we're gonna get right to uh, the next buggy, which is Outlaw. I think this is Outlaw One. Yeah, Clayton Hollingworth. This is uh, one of the last races he raced with. Uh... Was it 2018 when that happened? Yeah. Well, he broke his back and. 
in 2018. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was at, I was at the very was at very It didn't seem like much, but it was loud. You, could, you heard that belly pain smack that rock. Right yeah. This is actually did he did, did he stop right there and that was it? You know what I mean? Or no, no, he, he drove. He, Drove out he kept going, and uh, once he got to the bottom, he did let out a little bit. Uh, he paused about maybe two or three seconds, yeah. and then hammered it to the finish line. And then after that, I mean, right after that, I think it's Gilbert knew something was wrong. Yeah. And getting a ride back to, uh, I was getting right back to the park because in birds, the race hills are kind of like you got to get back on the public road. And it was kind of cool to see bouncers and stuff all running down the public road. Nice. Yeah. But uh, so on the way back is when we seen the helicopter coming and landing in the field, so we knew something was not good. Travis Vance, thanks for joining, sir. 69.32 second run. Clayton Hollingsworth. E, Travis, that has been the third best time on this hill of the day. We got up next, Nat Schisler. Dude, what about bad influence, man? That thing is nasty. Those that thing like is them. nasty. I didn't think that those headers would be as loud as um, Gold Rush, and I still don't think they are as loud as Gold Rush, but they are still brutally loud. Brutally loud. It's brutally loud, but it's somewhere in the upper you know, drag cars are really, really loud. It, real quick, it's like yeah. boom, and they're that thing's next to you, just beating off the limiter. It's loud. Yeah. Yes, I agree. But I love bad influence, but and you did, and what I used to, you know, do next to attitude. You didn't think nothing would be more rowdy than that, and then bad influence. It's like, oh man, that's yes. bad. When attitude comes by, I'm not as nervous as I used to be. Right. Can make this with a decent time. And bad influence, and even you know Timmy's buggies have always been really it's rowdy. Like like I, I hope he he can control his machine. I mean, better than anyone. I mean, that's not a question. So I don't really get nervous when he runs because I know he he, he is not like all oh, hey, he's 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 precise. Some of these other guys, they got they're going to use their feet. <laughs> Let it all hang out. That machine's gonna take it where it wants to go a lot of these times. But uh, I mean, the newer the machines get, the better these drivers get. Yeah, for sure. Look at Payne. You know, Payne's a new driver to the sport entirely. And you know, his first couple races, he's had a lot of trouble. But you have you have seen a complete steady improvement. Oh yeah. I think the kept Payne on the podium is bad luck. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. He had he was guaranteed a podium position in every race this year yep. if it wouldn't have been. Yep. Ever year, it was machine yeah. failure. I, I hurt for him, man. Bobby yeah. Tanner, it's only a matter of time now because he's proven to everybody he can drive that. Oh, day. yeah. Oh, definitely. There's no doubt about it. Been, the last three races have been very consistent, so I Porter. think he will be one of the next top guys. Oh, well, for sure. My friend and your friend too. But let's be honest, he's got some competition because Larry Krog, steady racers, improvement, Mr. Ryan Jake Ooh. Pike. Bram Krogh was just a natural. Krogh was just a Krogh, uh, natural. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Pike, yeah. He can't on Jake. Jake's an awesome driver, too. Jake's an OG. So, yep. and there's so many good ones. Like you said, there's there's too many good drivers now. And that's awesome. That's what's awesome about the sport. It's just like, you know, Monster Jam used to have the guys that were the big show outs. You know, you had, like, say, when we were growing up, you had Dennis Anderson. Well, maybe you had your model. Or Dennis Anderson and Tom Mintz with Maximum Destruction. Yep. They were the guys. They were the ones that almost 90% of the time, and everybody else still had a place, but they weren't as good. Now, Monster Jam is collectively a bunch of people. It's unbelievable, man. This boy has collected some of the best drivers in the country, which is really cool. Like Danny. I can't wait to see Danny in his new buggy. One, because I helped design it. I know. Design the family. Dude, he's, he's going to tear the crap out of the thing, and it's going to be awesome, because yeah. it's mean. Yeah. I, I thought that the buggy that Reject brought was Timmy's buggy, was, uh, was, uh, Danny's buggy, but that ended up being Justin Browder's new buggy. 
I don't know. Browder bar buggies. So, so both of them. So Dex, buggies. yeah, Dex has Liberty. Justin has. I don't know what the new one is. Yeah, maybe they'll hamper their hamper their RC game, so we all have a little bit of chance. <laughs> no, no, it won't. On the one. No. They get jittery when they're playing the RC. <laughs> or, or if they break their buggies and they're out back fixing it, they they'll skip the RC race. <laughs> Man, those guys, that, that honestly will probably be it. They may break off hill one and want to race hill two. I don't know. They, they pretty much have a guaranteed win almost in RC because they are just that. Good. Yeah. It's just like it's – but, but I, I, will they be more committed to one or the other? I mean, yeah. I think it would be RC. Yeah. You know what their, their skill is. I, it's crazy to see guys that – like, I don't know him do the back hill and – what was it, three seconds or something yeah. like that? Yeah, it was like three or four seconds. <laughs> and I, I thought Anthony Garcia did it in 12 seconds. I thought he, I thought that was it. I thought that was the winner. <laughs> he brought it and let up. Yep. Like, how is it? Mr. Keller, thank you for joining, sir. It is uh, uh, Mr. Dylan Patton from D Pat's Photography. That's who's with us. Brandon Davis is hands down one of the most underrated drivers in Don't the East Coast, series. Hey. Point blank. We have been saying week after week how consistent he is. Hold the bumblebee. He I'm is, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we talked about this one yesterday. Bird. Yeah. A consistent top five driver in the Southern Rock Racing Series. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was volume. That was hilarious. Outstanding yeah. driver. That's where we got old Will Stone. Billy Stone, yeah. And and I'll be honest with you, man, it's it's uh really not right. going to be it, it this, this like year wasn't that much day. better. Yeah. You know. And and we had one of our own there. I mean Mac Mac does all right. He knows his facts at least. Well uh, he knows most of it. Everybody, everybody's gonna make mistakes. Oh, for I, sure, I, dude. When you're, uh, yeah, when you're in front of the camera. You know. Look at Miles. Miles is an excellent broadcaster, but he still, uh, he still fumbles around. He says, "You talk for ten hours a day. What do you expect?" Yeah, and you gotta constantly, I, you know, because I've been in the trailer with Dave and Bree, and I know that uh, that any sort of dead air is is rough, dude. It's. It it makes people shut shut the show off, you know. If you're really not fully committed, but you've got people that are talking and and have a good dialogue going back and forth, you know, it keeps uh, keeps everybody tuned in. But if there's any sort of dead air and y'all are just playing on your phone or whatever, don't expect people to stay on and hang out for that. Mm. Yeah, no, dude, it's uh, it's it's a task in its own, and people don't give the guys a hammer any slack at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're just they on them yeah. because if you're yeah talking about what yeah. your words like, of at least they're out here doing this uh, they could just let you a blank shot in the desert instead of talking yeah like you know oh, what, Whitaker is on yeah the line. i mean what would, would you currently brandon davis i mean i, 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 I honestly i don't shut it off I, like the whole hammers league this year like i had to work during the league but i had to i had my phone box streaming the whole thing with headphones and so, I listen. so you listen to it the whole time nice i, I listened to the entire 4400 race and i got to watch the last three hours which happened to be like the best 4400 race that has ever happened. it was a good yeah it was a good year this year for sure Different leaders, you know, throughout that race, and they were dropping like flies. You know, you thought every walk away with it, and then boom, something bad would happen, and then they go to the next one, boom, something bad. Would happen. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah. That's what the it's last like minutes was awesome. Josh Bonner, who won the race, rolled over at the top of the back door on the smaller ledge when Marcos Gomez was right behind him. And if Marcos wouldn't have broke his a arm, he would have beat him. Yep. He would have, you know, that kind of stuff. Like last minute, it's making you you, you jump out of your seat. You're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I jumped up Josh Bowler roll over because at first they just panned to that shot where he was just upside down and I, I was like, is that the leader? Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Our it's, you know, that was awesome. On the scene, we will that was racing, dude. That, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. That's racing, man. Racing, whatever it was, in eight, nine hours and you guys are that close to each other. I think it's six and a half hours. Of, if I'm not mistaken, what's the fastest time or something like that? It's like six and a half or maybe, I don't know. 
it, it's crazy. But but I, after going there, now I know what it is. It's literally racing all the hammers. You know what I mean? You go and do one of the hammers, then you race to the next one, and you go do the next hammers, like hammer trails. I, I get it now. Yeah, guys like you know me that have only seen it through video you think you know it was like it's all right you're in here town you go over here you go here you go here come back no it's you go whoa yeah. you go out for the desert yep. you really do it's very long for one of those cars to go 40 miles yeah, yeah. across the desert we're in a whole different area of code almost sure yeah. it's what it's... that's what uh we, we've had this conversation before and i think it's safe to to mention here but there are certain uh rc series that take the name king of the hammers and try to make it their their own and they keep the name king of the hammers in there but you know unless you've been to king of the hammers dude you know you can't it, it's just it's riding coattails take it to a 10 scale you're going to run a king of the rc series you take that 230-something mile course, you break it into 10 skills. So what is that, 23 miles? 23 miles, don't you run behind that damn RC car yeah. and compete. Yeah. That's you. You get a hammer. Yeah. And that's not what they're doing. That's not what they're doing. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's insane. I don't think anyone can want to do that, but so is King of the Hammers. It's insane. Yeah. It is. Absolutely. This is no joke, but it's the harshest terrain in the country. Yep. So. Yep. No, well, you know, you know how I feel about just using names to ride coattails. You know what I'm saying? That's, uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. I, I've had people literally admit to me that the only reason why they they put rock bouncing or anything like that in their posts is because rock bouncing is the new up and coming thing, and it's hot right now, and uh, they want to, uh, you know. That's going to be a huge, yeah, yeah. that's oh, yeah. going to be a huge, I agree. can you talk a little bit about that, uh, uh about Joe, that event? Joe Pierce is one of the ones that makes it happen. That's right. He did up every one of his hometown parks. Ooh, Adam Ringer, he's jabbing away. Yeah, I think he's, uh, talking about, uh, King and, or, uh, John and his, the, uh, Mount Mud Run. Brenda's who actually puts on up there, that's main mud maniac or something, I forget what the event's called, but. Uh, Mountain mud run, and it's not Maine; it's, it's not New Hampshire. Joe is from Maine, the Maine maniac. The he puts on, you know, he's like manages the event, gets everybody up there. But uh, it's the Mountain Mud Run, and it's in Warren, New Hampshire, it's up in the White Mountains. Yeah, I'm actually, I was right before we started doing this, but I'm taking all the feature Friday posts I do do, uh, putting them in the blog section of my websites. If you don't see it and you want to know a little bit more about your driver, eventually you'll be able to go to my website and know about every single yeah, let's uh, make sure that we get that into the description and somewhere. Uh, if you if you can put your link in the in the chat or something, Dylan, so we can get everybody out there to check it out. If if you see anything that you like from Dylan, you can buy it and have it. This right here, this piece of work right here, Mr. Dylan Patton, right there. Favorite. That absolutely, yeah. That that was uh, a gift from Dylan. Luckily, my wife supports me really well. Takes care of children. So, I think I made you a single poster. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and and I have more. They're all in the shop too. I have, I have probably uh, half a dozen to a dozen of uh, Dylan's posters, but. Um, uh, Pretty much anything that you see from Dylan, you can have on your wall. You just got to go to his website here. He's got posted in the comments. So go ahead and uh, check out Dylan Patton at Deepak Photography. Tell me what you want. I'm going to help you out. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and it doesn't, and it's not just posters either. He's done all of my wraps um, for my RC panels. Uh, you know, so, and this, this right here is a custom, that's a custom job, man. That's not.
Look at this guy right here. You know, Dylan took my uh, my old love for comic books and made it and rock bouncing, and he just put them in a blender, and it came out to that. And uh, one of my favorite drivers too, the main maniac. And honestly, Joe has the same poster uh, in his shop. Yeah, no, that's one of my favorite. Honestly, I, I, I enjoy, I'm about to put that on myself just because if you get a, because you can't see how cool. No, oh no, absolutely not. No, it does a, it does that no justice. Do you have that on digits? Can you share that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I need to share that just because it is a really cool picture. Yeah, yeah, we gotta recirculate that one, man. Because again, you can't see, uh, you can't see it, you know, everything. When I do like when I do posters, I want to try and do that. Like every, it's funny. Every one I do, I'll actually will make a copy of it and make it a cartoon and try and sell that too. It's like, what do you like this one better? Like, no, I like the other one. I'm like, dang it! <laughs> <laughs> hey, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But I do try. That's something I enjoy doing. You know, I put a couple. Um, there you go, Sean Keller. I want one of those awesome posters, montage things of my RCs one of these days. So. Got it, Hit him up, man. Dodd Sorrell, thank you for joining. Mira, where are y'all watching from? Appreciate y'all joining us. Hey, we're going to uh, do another live feed later on. I'm going to have uh, Curtis Hazard on. Uh, we're going to do this one on YouTube this time. I haven't streamed to YouTube yet, uh, but we're starting a little channel. Uh, we just called it On the Hill with Nick and Friends. Um, so if you guys want to go on over to YouTube and, and search for us and check us out a little bit later on, uh, all of these will be saved so you can go back and watch them later on. Um, but uh, yeah, just trying to get everybody together and hang out. This is some crazy times that we got going on right now. So um, what, are you, what are you doing to, to uh, take precautions? You live out there in yeah, liberal land. Yeah, I, I, I live... I live in the desert, man. I don't. I haven't noticed a damn. I haven't noticed any changes. <laughs> There's a little less stuff on the shelf, but as I was talking to John yesterday, man, I haven't gone to the store once and not been able to get what I want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's yeah. Yeah. we're pretty rural. Yeah. Paper was the only thing that was out, which is hysterical. Yeah, it is. Uh, but uh, you know. Y'all gonna have some clean asses. That's right, I guess. So. <laughs> The only thing I went on bought was ammo. <laughs> ammo, yeah. Purchase. Like, yeah, I think it's good. Oh, that's great. Did y'all go shooting yesterday? I saw you uh, looking for a place to go oh. shooting. Kind of gloomy over here. The day is actually a lot nicer today, so probably when we get done doing this, I'll see if uh, wife wants to go do something like that. If not, we'll go do something fun. We try and uh, do things on Sundays. We didn't do anything last Sunday, but we usually go out and go for a walk or something like nice. that. Nice. Heck so. yeah, man. You get that, uh, you get rotten going, you'll be able to take rotten with you and, you know. That's what I said the last time. Yeah. Think about it. The next car, she's like, oh, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but if, I bet if you got her one, though, that she would have fun. No, I'm sure she'd want to play with it eventually. Yeah. I mean, it'd be fun. They are fun. I mean, that's why I wanted one. I was like, I've never really had a toy like that. But everything I ever had was a is something that was could be used as a tool or you know it didn't have a motor in it i mean me and my brother had four wheelers when we were very young but we tore the crap out of them dad was like i'm not buying you another one so you can save up for that and like, you know what they would we we enjoyed just being in the woods we played a lot of paintball and, and we used to take sticks and you'd break them against another tree that was still on the ground and try and hit each other hit someone with the projectile <laughs> Awesome. I mean, we take all our friends out in the woods, and that's what we did. I mean, we did that for hours. I mean, tell people get. I mean, it, it sounds silly, but it was a blast because we have tons. Of stuff. One up off the ground and whack it against another tree, and there you were. Wow. <laughs> that's fun. I think this is one of the last drivers here, Randall Key. We talked about Randall yesterday, but if y'all aren't tracking, Randall uh, is a paraplegic. Um, he drives with all hand controls. Getting after it. That's what I'm talking about. Randall's a bad driver, boy. Oh, and aside from that, Randall's just, I mean, he's an awesome guy. Oh, he's cool yeah. Talk. yeah. No doubt about it. He works on all He's a good mechanic. He's a hard-working dude, man. Nothing's split. So, he, 
Yep. Yep, very true. Experienced driver. Even though he drives with hands, he's still experienced driver. And some people ask, is he disabled? He's not disabled. He's just paralyzed from the waist down. He just can't use his legs. He's not like they're disabled. To Randall him. Key is not. Now, who do we opt? We, I think this is uh, uh -huh. that's breaking Matt. The beam. He's oh, just wait. breaking the beam. That's Matt Holt. There it is. Doo -doo -doo. Matt's getting What's his five do points. Uh, let's see. I'm going to work out in the shop a little bit. Um going to get prepared for that live stream for for tonight uh we're going to watch the uh last year's mountain mud run um footage cool. so uh, like i said earlier it's awesome yeah. i love that setup yeah i think what i'll be able to go out with mike because i got you know between my parents and me we got you know 25 acres right here so i got lots of places that I'll probably will get to because we live on top of the hill so this is every direction I want to go it's uphill battle yep. so wow that's cool we'll do it together park eventually maybe we'll get a couple of y'all out here we'll, heck yeah we'll put 20 20 cots in the garage if we got to and have a, a man party yeah heck yeah man and you know people will come too oh yeah Dustin Gurdon's been trying to get me he's like man let's put together something let's do something I'm like man I don't have the time for that yeah. I was like <laughs> I was like, I'm all about that. I was like, well, organize the oh, man. I, hey. I can uh, well, my playbook right I believe, judging from I will help. I'll help, today, man. Whatever you need. Are going to be uh -huh. shook I'm, up a little bit. Because I got, like, I, mean, I have a creek that pretty much surrounds our property, almost like a moat. So we go down there and talk, keep the embankments and stuff. It's, I would like to see we, it's, Well, that's it, y'all. Uh, Hill 2. Uh, I don't know that we find out who won. Uh, who, who, is this a Charles video? No, no. This is uh, Busted Knuckle when they were doing, you know, uh, Busted Knuckle Mad Ram 11 was filming and they were posting to their channels. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, hey. I know, I know all of them have usually been pretty good about putting that in the end of their videos, but I don't know. This this was back then. You know, yeah. They've all... Yeah, this was the first year. I don't think uh, I don't think they end up doing it. I'm sure it's more of just quick thing, trying to get that footage, up, get it up there. Oh, I and I agree, man. You know, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this show. It's it's gonna be up on uh, the on the hill with Nick and Friends channel. It'll be on my. Uh, personal channel the rc command channel and um you know we'll share it all over we'll share it all over dang uh facebook and instagram so yes sir we had john on yesterday we gotta get charles on next yeah good luck charles charles is always like that you know how charles he'll do yeah yeah we'll never get him in front of the camera let's be honest <laughs> No, I, hey, I, I think we should do that four four person chat thing uh, like we do when you know. I think we should definitely. Uh, That'd be wild. Get all of us on there. Oh boy. Do it. Fishing for days, right? Oh yeah, we could probably talk for hours. I mean, that's why we never fall asleep in the hotel room. That's right. That's right, man. If y'all could see, be a fly on the wall when we're all hanging out. Uh, after well it's usually friday night going into the saturday and we're all like all right look we got to get up early like we need to go to bed one two one two three o'clock in the morning we're like oh man where did the time we go up. we got to get up in just a couple hours <laughs> and we're it's not like we're partying i mean we're all we're you know standing around just doing exactly what we're doing right here and that's that's why i want to do all do all this stuff for y'all so but, well, that's it, brother. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, we will definitely have you on again, for sure. I enjoy doing this. You're right. We will set something up in the future. I'm happy to do it. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, I think. Awesome. Do cool. with everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, good deal, man. We will talk to you soon. All right, brother. You stay safe out there. All right, man. Stay healthy. Yep. See you. Cool. Well, all right, guys. 
I'm going to sign off as well, too. I appreciate, appreciate all y'all joining us. And uh, see if I missed any comments. It sucks. In Oregon, walking into the store feels like a sci-fi movie. Sean, I, I hear you, man. I see, I see the stuff happening on the news. I get it. I get it. You guys played rock fights. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Dylan telling us about this shenanigans as a kid. Uh, my dad wasn't stoked. The time we put a rock through his window, though, talk about ass smacking. Oh, boy. Yeah, I get you. Let's see. We did that. Well, that's really up till 3 a.m. Up at 6, yeah. That's how it goes. Well, all right, guys. I'm going to sign off here, but thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, we're going to be up uh, on YouTube later on. Um, so look for those updates coming soon we will see you on the hill next time